Welcome everyone to a new episode of Myth Bust Monday, where every Monday we're gonna look at some popular fitness or nutrition myth, look at where it was that myth got started, and then look at why it's actually wrong based on the scientific literature. So this week we're gonna be investigating the question of whether or not weightlifting stunts growth. And like always, let's first take a look at where it was that this myth got started. So back in 1964 in Japan, a team of researchers noticed that children performing heavy labor tended to be very short in stature. The research Researchers hypothesized that the hours spent lifting and moving heavy weights were responsible for the stunted growth. Over the years, the proposed mechanism became that excessive external loading would cause potential damage to the growth plates at the end of the long bones, resulting in their premature closure and stunted height. However, this was only actually shown to occur in the case of actual bone fracture, which is more likely to occur in contact sports like football or hockey. So where did the idea go wrong? Well, first of all, again, correlation does not imply causation. And so it seems to be the case that these Japanese child laborers were not only being overworked, but also undernourished, a factor that seems to be much more central to reaching one's maximum height potential. As for the premature closure of the growth plates, um, it turns out that this hypothesis was not only wrong, but actually couldn't possibly be more wrong as a 2014 international consensus position statement endorsed by really every relevant regulatory body, including the American Academy of Pediatrics, all the way to the NSCA, reported that fears that resistance training would injure the growth plates of youths are not supported by scientific reports or clinical observations, which indicate that the mechanical stress placed on the developing growth plates from resistance exercise or high strain eliciting sports such as gymnastics or weightlifting may actually be beneficial for bone formation and growth. A much more biologically focused review in sports medicine notes that high loads have a critical role in bone mass acquisition during and before puberty, and that according to the mechanostat theory of bone formation, actions in sport that involve tensile, compressive, shear, bending, and torsion stresses on bones can elicit mechanostat-related mechanisms during growth and have an osteogenic or bone-producing potential. And again, borrowing from the 2014 position stand, itself drawing from 243 scientific references, it's clear that resistance training for children and adolescents is safe, provided they're given proper instruction on technique and progression and are lifting under the supervision of an adult. It's also been shown to be beneficial for bone health, injury prevention, and general strength, and may also help to improve children's perceived sports competence and just overall self-esteem. And finally, I think it's an important point that encouraging kids to start weight training early may help them develop the relevant habits to continue weight training into adulthood. All right, so guys, that's gonna conclude this week's Myth Bust Monday. I think this is one of those topics that's just been more or less decided upon within the, the scientific community, and there seems to be a lot of converging evidence and just unanimous agreement within the, the scientific literature on this one. I think we can safely say uh, that we can put this myth to rest. Thank you guys again for watching. If you liked the video, please leave me a thumbs up, and don't forget to comment below any topics you'd like to hear me cover in a future Myth Bust Monday. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys all here next Monday.